Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Ko. Today I would like to talk about postnatal care uh, as a general practitioner visit as at what we can do. Um, this is this article is taken from uh, this month Australian Journal of General Practice. It is publicly available to uh, freely to everyone. So you can check, you can see the uh, web address here at the top as well. So the, this is an important topic since it is an intersection between um, pregnancy care and returning back to normal self. And in real life, in practice, the postnatal care or checkup happen in the six weeks check. So uh, the difficulty that I find that is that um, sometimes uh, parents or women are not advised to check for herself. They are uh, they would check with their midwife, um, which will do the screening. But um, it is something that we need to initiate as a GP about that, how to book a separate appointment for herself. So, or otherwise, if you if you are organized enough, uh, if someone book in for the six weeks needle or six week check. Uh, need to book in for both mother and the baby. Um, it is important to uh, aware of that. Um, so if you had starting with this, so uh, you will obviously you need time to assess properly. From exam point of view, it would be an interesting topic and uh, it would really judge or test a candidate's uh, clinical reasoning skill and how flexible they are. So, for example, this could be a combination of pediatrics and obstetrics. So the mother may have a few questions and uh, about herself and her baby, and the question may include everything related to immunization about the baby to newborn care, or uh, in any situation or problem that might arise from the uh, being a new mother. So that may be, for example, uh, immunization question, someone who is hesitate to immunize their child uh, with someone who is suffering with uh, postpartum depression or anxiety. So that is a good case. Um, one thing I found that I read through this uh, article and it is a good summary and overview. So if you are looking for this, this top, this is has to be a must-read article for any GP registrar. All right, so um, the authors are Talila, Milroy, and Jacqueline Frayne, and we have all the DOI here. So uh, it started with objective, and I'm going to highlight along the way. So to have a consistent approach, postnatal visit, and general practice setting. So there is a picture of a little cute child. So where do we start? Uh, postnatal period, we call that from the delivery of placenta and lasting up to six weeks. And sometimes it may call up to 12 weeks. Um, as a GP, we don't have any of these uh, arbitrary uh, demarcations since we look after the person from birth to until they are dying. So it is as usual, effective healthcare education is important for postnatal care. So let's go there. So yeah, it is important to uh, educate uh, women as well as parents, families that checking your mother's health is important um, and not just due to physical uh, it is for emotional and social assessment um, so not just so that's why it is six week visit is not just immunization and we literally need to go head to toe so it says that individual may take 20 to 30 minutes appointment so ideally postnatal visits uh, immunization visit uh, for mo both mother and baby should take one hour 
and I think that's always a good practice to have like a visit type in the software where if a mother book appointment it has to be one hour and it is we can offer it if they don't want it that's fine so maternal assessment is that ongoing general and reproductive health care are considered so this is the history taking we will ask how did she go how was the labor mode of delivery perinatal tear in fact this is a good prompt um, when you in the in clinical software to enter it uh, if you say postnatal care so for example uh, PNC or PNC visit and if you enter it it would prompt this list on the on your note so that you can ask that point by point um, so we ask the after perinatal tear bowel and bladder issue is there any other health problem how long is there any prolongation of hospital stay any concern regarding breastfeeding pain attachment discharge any nipple cracks how is the sleep how is social situation is there any other support from the partner uh, parents and uh, any concern from the mother about the infant we do mental health assessment we talk about sexual health contraception and future pregnancy planning and uh, sometimes um, you may think that this is a bit too early to talk about this but it is important um, and we will check immunization if mother is needing immunization for uh, things that condition that she cannot have during pregnancy this is the time she can have it now and we will check recess status uh, from the exam point of view this is a good for uh, like a kfp type question where what are the key points you would ask this woman so uh, first thing is uh, if mother has antenatal or um, antenatal complication like high blood pressure diabetes or thyroid we need to reassess so of course they mention increased risk of these condition after the uh, ongoing risk I meant so gestational diabetes what do we do OGTT at six weeks and OGTT every three years um, and there is useful resources a link in here so which is a good thing now this is a PDF this is a word document and hypertension disorders so again this is a very good guideline already mentioned maybe I should cover them separately as well so blood pressure check within seven days of delivery and we would check for end organ damage well that's easy how is the eyesight any signs of pressure or is there any uh, protein in the kidneys we can do blood tests and if the person is taking blood pressure medication do we need to stop it and if we are stopping how do we stop it do we stop abruptly or do we wean it off uh, it is quite individual basis and age of mother as well as how high the numbers are so generally the care for uh, blood pressure doesn't stop so it has to keep going with that thyroid medication so um, the mother's need for thyroxine should reduce in for after delivery so we would check for frequently um, and in terms of that could be hypo or hyperthyroid and there is a good link let's click and see where it brings to so thyroid disorder and this was done in 2017 so not too old uh, we can check that afterwards so perimental, perinatal mental health is a, a good screening uh, it's an important topic um, I mean it's uh, if the mother may have already uh, underlying mental health conditions and they may be uh, not wanting to take medications or they are already taking medication because of that so we need to review it and we need to be screening so if you are already looking after the mother for mental health during antenatal period during pregnancy this will be continuation you will continue to do whatever tool that you are using for uh, monitoring the progress however uh, 
tools available are the Edinburgh Postnatal Depression Skill or uh, K10. Uh, you can use either one, but use the same tool consistently. So physical examination, what we are doing, this is again good exam point. What do you do if you have uh, two minutes to do it or if you have to blurt it out? So I would check um, uh, vital sign, temperature, breast exam, and fundal height. Uh, is, this is to see where the uterus is uh, involuting. We will check abdomen, any uh, muscle separation. Uh, so they call that as a divarication or rectus sheath. How is the wound? How is the, um, if there is any episiostomy wound, how is it going? Uh, if there is cervical screening is due, we will do that at this time. Um, Pallor, sign of anemia, we will look at it. And uh, investigation. So investigation, uh, we will continue with things like blood sugar, iron level, um, in terms of um, thyroid function tests, if we need to do it. So it depends on the uh, situation. If there is any sign of wound infection, we should do wound swab. If there is any risk of infection within the uterus or delay involution, we would do pelvic ultrasound. So uh, if there is any dysuria or uh, dyspareunia, we would check the urine test. So management of these condition are uh, really dependent on what are they and uh, most of them are straightforward and I think they mention clearly of that. So blood loss is a natural process after every childbirth but generally that should gradually stop after one day and the like postpartum hemorrhage is more than 500 mil uh, within 24 hours um, and it has to stop but if it is ongoing and if it is larger than that volume that is important so if you are seeing the ongoing blood loss and that is um, significant amount so we have to think about retained product infection um, hematoma or blood and bleeding disorder so the uh, it is more relevant if it is you are seeing one or two days after childbirth. Uh, this is not something you would see that in in the urban GP clinic setting. So there is detailed management about them uh, uh, in the book. You can read about it. So if it is infection, antibiotics, if it is blood products, you need to re refer to hospital or ultrasound if you are the person who will be seeing this woman in the hospital. If you can do it yourself, that's all the better. Uh, go for it. ultrasound. Pain. Um, pain is common. Uh, we need to know what is expected pain and an expected or abnormal pain. Also, where is pain coming from? Is it from the uh, caesarean section wound? Or is it from a BCOstomy wound? If it is a lot more than what it is, it is important. Um, and option-wise, that paracetamols is still safe. Um, and the inflammation are relatively safe, but depending on breastfeeding uh, and inform the risk, if it's something they want to take, at least topical NSAIDs are fine. Um, it's mentioned aspirin should be avoided. Breastfeeding. Interesting. When was the last time we used aspirin? Um, tiredness and fatigue are the most common. So both doctor and patients are tired. Um, and the we need to find out, is it physical or mental problem? Go with the biopsychosocial uh, approach for everything that we see um, so it is it's quite a lot of exploration however 
I'm sure that, and everyone knows that it childbirth, looking after a new baby, is a very demanding role, and that alone is quite、um, energy demanding. Breastfeeding. Let me just check the volume. Breastfeeding is. There is a separate article mentioned here, reference twenty nine to twenty seven to twenty nine, so we can refer to that.、Um, generally, if you don't know、uh, details about any troubleshooting with breastfeeding problem,、uh, you can always refer to or ring your lactation consultant from the maternity、uh, department of the hospital or midwives who could give you good information. Um, mention about the mention about drug and alcohol、um, counseling. It is of course if you、uh, you don't need to ask everyone. That's also from the exam point of view. If you are men,、uh, if you are describing this, and if the the case says that the woman does not drink, and you don't really need to brought this up.、Uh, sexual health is important.、Um, so in terms of、um, Symptoms that we can see that women may not wanting to、uh, have sex, vaginal dryness and dyspareunia, and this is、um, almost physiological because of the a lot of things are happening through the body, and、um, from evolution perspective, you want to look after the current one before starting to plan for another baby. So, however.、Um, Different people have different expectations of when they can resume sex, so、uh, we just need to play it safe to make、um, help wise and mother and baby, and also what they want to do. So, in terms of the、um, getting, if there is any pain, we need to find out: is it physiological? Is it pathological? Or dryness,、uh, of course, mentioned here as a lubricant, can be done.、Um, more importantly, contraception is more important. If mother feels that they are physically and mentally ready to resume sex,、uh, that's all matters,、um, and we need to talk about it. And、uh, here is a lot more exhaustive list of options. So. First of all,、um, this is mainly for breastfeeding. If you, the woman is not breastfeeding, the options are you can literally choose anything. So we normally avoid anything that include estrogen. That's how I remember it. And so you can go with the progesterone only option. That can be in the pill. It can be in the IUCD, Implanon, and the、uh, depo injections. So it has it both good and bad things. So you can read on the list here, and also contraindication. What are the condition that you should not be using? That's a very exhaustive list, and they are not black or white、uh, contraindication either. So most of them are quite relative. So if you are not sure, you、uh, consult with、um, either obstetrician or Your local reproductive health unit.、Um, in terms of the depo injection, they are quite safe, and most young women should be okay. But the mention of not to use any progesterone, even、uh, if the woman has history of breast cancer. So those who are exclusively formula feeding,、um, and then. Combined oral contraceptive pill is quite all right.、Um, interestingly, it doesn't mention of breast cancer history here, so that's、um, yeah. I don't know. Is it a hindsight or is it?、Uh, yeah, I don't know why breast cancer is.、Uh, we should be using estrogen. So that should be mentioned here. So smoker and age over thirty-five is mentioned here,、uh, which is not mentioned in the other options.、Hmm.
conclusion is that uh, it is a important point in a woman's the whole family's life and if you manage and if you can help um, the family it is it can it can have a lot of uh, both good and bad outcomes from it if it is managed properly and sometime if you're not sure you can review the person frequently and um, you can ask help and um, that's that's what we we are here for and to assist the person in us in a way that you can assist with we don't have we may not have answers to every question the person might have but we can ask people who would know more than us so don't feel too overwhelmed and that's completely normal and since this is a challenging task so for example you may see a child who are definitely some having physical health issue and the mother may have their own mental health physical health issue you need to manage at the same time father may have depression or any other um, pro health problems at the same time so it can be quite heavy at when you are managing this properly in complex cases but luckily they may not be they may not be every uh, family you see you may see families who are quite all right and um, or there is nothing really pick up on your checklist so um, it is important that this presentation can vary depending on um, person to person basis and it is something I want you to reflect upon what did I do when I see the last woman or did I check all of these things when I did my um, pupirial check or six weeks baby check if I did not do that why did not I do that so that kind of reflection is important I have to admit I may not be doing all of this in um, formal form of assessment but I usually uh, has to has privilege of knowing in a GP or working in a GP setting not as like a maternity outpatient clinic so I would have history for most families um, previous visits already so yeah have a read and I think it is very good um, case for both exam in written uh, clinical component so I hope you also find this video very useful bye bye